Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Calgary Barbell. Today I came in after a bit of a late night last night. Uh, the Foo Fighters were in town. They played for like three hours. It's one of my wife's favorite bands in the whole world. Uh, so we went, we had a good time, had a couple drinks, stayed up late and uh, came in this morning and actually had a surprisingly good lift. So pretty happy about that. Once upon a time, this the memory. The memory, the memory. It's like synergy, like the hardest teacher y'all could ever get the master. Get a test first, and y'all get that lesson after. Steve's never stressing them G's to freeze egos. Please, I just get them in threes, like the Migos. Perfect with the music while they browse. I put out more prize than public house. We can sit in the room the biggest mouse. They batter the hundred up with a thousand. See, in the game of life, it ain't a sequel. I did a lot of good for bad people. Had to raise the bottle. Dope like the narcos. I've been riding for you, shorty. Now I'm about to park, though. Started the day off with some deadlifts. Um, worked up to a top set of 300. Uh, I was looking for like 290, 295, but uh, warm-ups just felt really good. So I kind of went for it. Um, 285 was my last warm-up set and it just moved like butter, moved like air. I wasn't getting any hip pain on my top sets today. Uh, it was a little bit weird trying to find a groove once I lightened the load a bunch. Uh, I did my three, or sorry, two ramp-up sets, my top set at 300 for five, and then six sets of five following that. Uh, with 240 kilos and those believe it or not were more challenging in terms of um, I guess trying to trying to use mechanics that allowed me to stay out, out of pain uh, I find for me there are certain um, movements or certain ways of moving where my body is sensitized to pain and moving differently allows me to not uh, not experience that so it's not necessarily that my technique is better and that makes it pain free, but uh, moving differently keeps me further from, uh, you know, whatever's causing the pain. Uh, so mostly good today. A little bit of, uh, I call it sensation now because I've, I've kind of gotten away from um, pain in the more true sense of like, oh, that hurts. But I do get a little bit of a dull ache in my hips sometimes on, uh, on the odd rep here and there. So um, yeah, but. Just to give a bit of an update on that, uh, things are going really well. My squats are generally all pain-free. My deadlifts have actually been a bit more problematic, trying to bring back from, um, you know, sort of the very low intensities where there's absolutely no pain, and pushing up into the higher intensities, trying to maintain uh, and and stay just below that sort of in intensity threshold where I start to feel that pain. What's your album recommendation today? Um, it took me a little bit to think of something, um, but I've been back into uh, an album from 2005. This is probably the only album I listened to for probably, I don't know, like six months when I was 18 years old. Uh, the album's Shadows of Security, the band is As I Lay Dying. Give it uh, three screaming Bryce heads out of five in terms of the intensity. It's uh, not the craziest, most intense stuff. There's a fair bit of like melody, some very like emo singing parts. But there's also some pretty awesome and pretty gnarly breakdowns. Um, it's one of my favorite albums front to back to just put on a train to. So go check it out if you guys haven't heard of uh, heard of this album. It's definitely my favorite album by them. Um, so yeah, go check it out. After that, um, a bazillion sets of deadlifts. Moved on to do some touch and go bench press. Worked up through 122 for a set of eight. 130 for a set of eight, and then uh, 137 and a half for a set of eight. Now the 137 and a half, I actually missed uh, a rep there last week. So I got them all this week, all eight reps. So, uh, it's still pretty shy of my best touch and go work. I think my best touch and go 10 was like 142. So, you know, I think overall the cut might be affecting my bench strength, but Normally, as soon as I start cutting, like if I drop below 105, 104, my bench just tanks. And uh, right now I'm still probably good for 177, 180. So I'm within striking distance of PRs, uh, hanging out between like 101 and 102 and a half kind of body weight. So um, dropping slowly, feeling good. Did some uh, close stance, high bar squats to finish the day out. And those are just uh, sort of density training, timed training. Um, 
Mike has me load up a 12 RM and then go for 12 minutes, just open-ended sets and reps, however much I can get in. Today was, I think, four or five sets of eight to 10, uh, and those felt really good, so. Pretty happy with the day, but I'm knackered. My pre-workout wore off, and I'm just tired again, but. Uh, we got some questions over there, Dylan? Uh, we actually have way too many questions. Too many questions, There's... that's a good thing. Thank you guys for too many questions. We kept asking and asking. That's better than no questions. And no one was really sending us anything, and then this last video we had probably 80 questions. Yeah. So, apologies. Feast or famine, man. Apologies so if we guess. don't get to everyone, which we won't get to everyone. Very clearly, we no. won't. I'll but. go in and, uh, and answer some in, uh, in the comments yeah. via my keyboard. Uh, one of the ones that I saw that might be good was, and I'll shorten it because it is literally like a book. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Let's see. I was worried that guy was really mad about something when I saw you reading that because he typed <laughs> so much out. Um, but I guess he just had a really nuanced, detailed question. The, the basis of it is, as a coach, do you believe some athletes from specific backgrounds have greater trainability in powerlifting? From specific backgrounds? What Define background. Well, he you mean saying, like a sport history background? Yeah, like a bobsled athlete, someone who does martial arts, gymnastics, etc. Yeah, I think like a person who has the uh, physiological and psychological capabilities to be a good athlete is going to be a good athlete, basically. So where a person could excel in one sport, often those are the same qualities that will help them excel in other sports. Um, usually of a similar, uh, like you could say, energy system. Uh, so a bobsledder, something that's very fast paced, um, you know, quick bursts of energy, probably gonna be fairly transferable to powerlifting just because that energy system and those fibers fiber types are going to be well developed, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I don't think the same transference would happen if you had like an elite um, marathon runner, ultra marathon runner. Um, but I mean, who knows, again, the psychological capacities and tendencies of a good athlete, uh, I think are usually pretty useful for the broad spectrum of, uh, of athletes. So yes, I think that uh, somebody who is a good athlete will be a good athlete in other sports, as long as there's enough similarities. Well, you can read, you read this part. This is just that. Part. Okay. My experience, I always found athletes coming from backgrounds where proprioception and general coordination were central had a slight advantage. So he's saying basically that long-term athlete development, a lot of emphasis put on motor development, um, but that seems contradictory because people don't traditionally associate fine motor development with powerlifting. Uh, I think it's, I think in that context, it's probably dependent on the level of development. Uh, there's been enough research and literature to show that a wide variety of motor learning uh, as a developing athlete and through formative years um, is much more beneficial in the long run for athlete, athletic development. But I don't necessarily think that a powerlifter who's already 20 or 25 years old, who's beginning to specialize in powerlifting is necessarily going to get a lot of benefit or transference out of doing widely varied things. Uh, I think as a developing athlete in younger years, yes, absolutely. The more of that kind of stuff you can do, the better, more, more proprioception coordination training you can do, the better. But once you begin specializing, uh, I don't think that there's that same amount of transference once you've kind of built the general uh, baseline of proprioception coordination and motor skills. I think before I go through like a million more questions or even do any more on this video, I think we should just maybe ask do people want to see more than one question per video? Like does it feel too long of a video if we're putting so many questions in it? Because another thing we can do is just like one like a big Q &A. FAQ video or something? Yeah. Yeah. Which I think might be a Well, maybe way. we'll do that. Let's uh, let's answer one more okay. in this video, yeah. and then we'll, we'll do an FAQ video to answer a bunch of the questions from this video, because you guys had a lot of questions. So we'll sit down, we'll pick a bunch out, and we'll go through them the best we can. All right, so we got another question here, and this might be a kind of a long-winded answer, um, but we'll, uh, we'll kind of try to get into it a little bit here anyways. Uh, so Duke Starstruck is, yeah, Duke Starstruck uh, is asking, okay, so he's got a month off of work, a month where he's between jobs, and then he starts uh, a pretty high demand job in terms of his time commitments. So he's wondering if 
he would be better suited to uh, break up his sessions into two days while he has the time off? Um, and if so, how would I organize those sessions? The only time I've ever done two days is when I'm doing like all three comp lifts plus some uh, in a session. So it's gonna depend on your specific level of adaptation, work capacity, uh, what you're used to. You, you probably don't want to uh, just go from, you know, a sort of baseline volume to double or triple that right away. Uh, I, I would, however, you know, maybe add a set here or there per week, uh, per every couple of workouts and see if you can ramp that volume up within what your body is capable of recovering from and adapting to during that time off. So yes, I would push the volume. I would be careful not to go too crazy, especially based on what you've done previously. Um, and maybe two a days would, would help. Uh, for me, it's like it's a half hour to the gym and back. So, But when I was doing a lot more personal training at the gym, um, Specifically prepping for Worlds 2016, I would break my sessions up just because that allowed me to get in, you know, an hour and a half in the morning, an hour and a half in the evening. I'd be able to eat, kind of rest a little bit in between, uh, and that helped me mentally probably more than anything. So I, I don't know that there's any research to suggest that, uh, you know, breaking things up into multiple sessions per day is more beneficial or less beneficial. Uh, I would say that if it fits your schedule to do a little bit here and a little bit there, you're not going to lose anything, but you're probably not going to gain too much. <coughs> beyond uh, what you would normally get anyways. The other thing that's worth mentioning is once you get back into a higher demand job, uh, there's nothing to say that you can't get stronger on like uh, three workouts a week or something like that. Uh, Taylor actually coached a guy just recently uh, who came out I think in the 105 kilo class with like a 290 squat, a damn near 200 kilo bench and like a 280 deadlift uh, and he was training three days a week. So Taylor and uh, Drew Anderson, so Drew Anderson and Taylor were able to come up with a plan that worked for him to get him a heck of a lot stronger, only training three days a week, because I guess Drew has a pretty demanding schedule. So it's definitely doable, um, but it takes a little bit more thought, a little bit more um, consideration, definitely more closely monitoring your training, looking at trends in the data, if you're collecting data on you know, your recovery, um, your, your strength adaptations over time, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, so it can be tricky, but it's definitely doable. So to answer the questions now in a little bit more condensed version, uh, break up your sessions if you feel like it. Probably not gonna get too much out of it, but you're not gonna lose anything by breaking them up. Um, don't be afraid to push the volume, but don't go too crazy with it. Try to ramp it up over time, over your month off. And when you get back, you can make gains on less work, probably just not to the same magnitude. But if you are smart with monitoring training, you can get strong on less sessions. So that's enough jabbering out of me. Uh, a couple housekeeping notes. Number one, I uh, had a lot of questions about this. It's ammonia. It's the same thing as people crack and uh, sniff little inhalants. We're just cheap asses. I lost all my bottles of inhale, which is really good stuff. Um, so there's a couple of bottles of like household cleaning ammonia around here. So it's just ammonia. I'm not sniffing bleach. I'm not mixing that with bleach and sniffing Agent Orange uh, or anything crazy like that. So let's all just take it down 10 or 20%. So why do you sniff it? For the people that might um, why do you sniff ammonia? Uh, basically for arousal. It stimulates your adrenal system in some way, shape or form. I'm not a scientist, but uh, that's the basic purpose of it, is to help you get amped up, more or less, without, uh, without sounding like I'm putting my foot in my mouth for speaking on science that I don't know anything about. Um, the other thing is the documentary's coming out next year. We're working on it. That's part of why the content's been a little bit slower to come out lately. Um, the rough, I think, is due March. We'll be finished, like, April. Are you shaking your head? Oh, it's just all over the place. Yeah, so. You need like a certain rough done in like February and then you need another one done. Like it's, yeah. Yeah, it'll be done around the, April, June next year. The final copy is due in May. In May, sorry. So, then, so we'll be done done in May on the documentary. Um, new apparel drops this weekend. Let's keep an eye out for that. 
Actually, this will come out on Monday, so it just dropped. Um, and we have some more videos that are edited that we're gonna put out. Um, we're just, we're trying to take a little bit more time to put more work into each video uh, and make sure that we're not just producing a lot of content, because we did that for a while. We were dropping videos like four or five days a week, but we found that it was just kind of filling the gaps at times, just, just filling the space. Uh, so we're gonna take our time. We're gonna put out a little bit less content. We're gonna ideally put out a little bit more, or sorry, a little bit better content, a little bit more better content, uh, and put a little more effort into each video, try to give more takeaway. Uh, we're gonna delve into some science-y videos, look at some studies, try and say things um, a little more intelligently and critically through a, a bit more of a scientific lens. Um, that's pretty much it, hey? Pretty much it. The coaching library won't be launching with the apparel. That's just gonna take us a little bit longer to work out, but uh, that is also something we're working on, so. With no further ado, uh, I've been talking for probably like 20 minutes now. Hopefully Dylan edits this shit down. Anyways guys, that's it for today. Uh, I've been blabbering for a long time and hopefully Dylan can edit it down. I know you guys like longer videos, but this is getting a bit ridiculous. So, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for tuning in and stay tuned for a lot more exciting stuff. Bye bye